Today I want to present to you all of my favorite reds. What up friends, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. So the first time, uh, the first video I kind of did of showing all of my X colors um, was with the greens and a lot of you enjoyed it. And so I thought of doing another one and the next kind of obvious choice was all of my reds. Um, so what I'm gonna do is lay down six reds that I commonly use, okay? These aren't all of my reds. Um, because I have quite a few of them, but I don't use many of them. There's like six that I usually uh, use. So these are the ones I want to share with you today. Here's a sneak peek. And um, I actually included <laughs> like English Venetian red, which um, is a bit funny because it's a bit of the, on the brown side, but I did um, um, disclude, disclude um, the burnt siennas, okay? Because I don't consider them really red. They're more brown and orange. Um, so it's mostly like kind of cadmiums and, and scarlets and quinacridones, okay? So without further ado, let's change the angle and get started. Okay, so this time I decided to show you uh, the drawing process itself as well, and not just the painting, because I think it's important to see how I draw differently when it's meant for painting. And you've probably seen this uh, before, because I usually when I show the drawing process, I do put an emphasis on that. So all I care about is the shapes of light and shadow. Um, so uh, I showed you this with the apple example and with other, even the portraits. Um, so you see, I, I literally mark where the highlights are gonna be and um, where uh, the shadows are gonna be. Um, and just focusing on the larger shapes. So here we had the tomato, now we're uh, doing the strawberry and the strawberry is a bit of a more complex shape because it has all the seeds. Um, so I'm not going to go into too many uh, details with that. You'll see when I go uh, into the painting process, I'm just trying to get a quick impression. Uh, and if I can get something with fewer lines, I'll probably go for that. And now I'm working on uh, the rose or some kind of a flower. And uh, I try to think about, first I did the drawings and then I try to figure out which color will match uh, each the most. Um, so with, for the rose I'm using the more magenta or quinacridone rose or things like this. Um, next up we have this uh, pepper. Um, there's very interesting things going on with the highlights, the way the highlights look um, depending on the surface. So a pepper is usually very um, shiny and and it's also very smooth surfaced and so you'll get a very interesting um, glean on it or shine on it. Here we have the shoe, um, just kind of a standard all-star shoe, uh, which I used for the uh, English Venetian red because it was the only one that I thought would fit it in some way because shoes can come in many different colors. And finally we have the bell pepper. Uh, so just putting in the major shapes of light and shadow. Uh, in terms of complexity, I think the rose and the bell pepper are the most complex. Uh, the shoe, of course, as well, but I just didn't put too many details there. Um, so anyway, now you get to see the painting process. And, and what I wanted to show you was basically how each color, uh, what each color looks like. Uh, so we're not really going to make this into a how-to. Um, but I am very pleased with some of these, especially the tomato, I think, turned out uh, pretty nicely. Um, there is good uh, combination of the values are, are spread evenly in an interesting manner. Um, we have the blending action that you'll soon see uh, going on pretty well, I think. Um, some wet and wet just to get the darker darks. Um, blending in the shadow and now and add the highlight and then I add a bit of paint because it wasn't enough paint and, and then I blend it again. Um, there's a very interesting cast shadows by the, uh, the parts of the stem, the green parts, I guess. Um, they cast a small shadow onto the highlight, which creates an interesting um, effect. And yeah, this is pretty much it for the tomato, just putting in the darkest of darks. Um, sorry about the shakiness, I was moving the table a bit. Um, so yeah, and now I'm putting in the, the darkest uh, part, parts of the stem and now you'll uh, really be able to read better the, the cast shadows there um, that influence the highlight. Uh, so next up we have the cadmium red light. Uh, this is one of the main reds I use. I, I, it kind of replaced my pyrrole scarlet when I moved to using more schminka. Uh, they're really, really similar, these two. Um, I find that 
you can use these interchangeably. I do think the uh, cadmium red light is a little uh, warmer, just a bit warmer, not not significantly, but they're very similar. Um, so yeah, and this is a good opportunity to mention that um, I love Schmincke and it's definitely the brand I like the most. But uh, in terms of reds, if you do a lot of florals and things like this, um, Daniel Smith has, I think, the best reds on the market. Um, so I definitely urge you to check them out for this example. Um, I really enjoyed using their reds as well, not just uh, Schmincke. You know, Schmincke are, are softer for the most part. But for example, the Pyrrol Scarlet I just used <clears throat> by Daniel Smith is as soft as the Schmincke ones. I'm sorry I missed some of the uh, uh, painting process just at the beginning. Um, I accidentally didn't hit record, which is a bit embarrassing to admit. Um, but anyway, now I'm putting in some shadows in the shadows. Uh, this one has a rather complex shape. And because I'm working pretty fast on these, uh, I didn't get it to look uh, ex exactly as I wanted to. I don't know how well it reads eventually, but you know, it's just very quick s sketches and studies. And now we have the small... Uh, pepper. Um, for this one, I'm using the Peril in Dark Red, which I also started using extensively. Um, this one, compared to the other ones, I think is a little cooler. Um, I really like this one, actually. The, it creates beautiful um, combinations of orange and, and purple. I uh, really have been enjoying this one, and it's starring in many of my recent uh, videos. You probably um, saw this one. Tio's portrait, I, I believe, was done with this. Uh, I could be mistaken. It could be the Pyrrol Scarlet, the Cadmium Red, sorry. Um, and next up, the Venetian Red, English Venetian Red. I, f I forgot to uh, record the first part, or I, I, I don't know what happened to the recording. Uh, so now you get to see where I put the um, bit of uh, darker darks and shadows and this one is really brown so I wasn't sure if I'm gonna put it in uh, the video but uh, but I really like it and so uh, I decided to put it in because it is still red um, and I did leave as I mentioned the uh, burnt siennas because they feel a little more brown and orangey um, to be more precise the, sh the Schmincke's burnt sienna could fit in here but it's a bit more on the orange side and now finally we have the bell pepper for this one I'm using the quinacridone rose by Daniel Smith and this is one I haven't used in a while now so I really missed it uh, I like it it's uh, much different from the uh, uh, magenta or the quinacridone magenta of uh, Schmincke and I think it's uh, a happier color I really enjoy it. It has a bit more red in it, I guess. Um, it's less of a violet color. Um, so just putting in some shadows. We'll soon blend the highlights, making sure that they look good and not out of place. And of course the stem, which is usually darker. And notice how it's interesting because one lesson to learn from this video is that it's hard to get darker darks with just one color sometimes. Um, and it was, as you can see, at least with one layer. Uh, I'd usually mix uh, one or two together to get a darker darks. And here you have a view of all of them. And I just want to show them to you a bit zoomed in. And in a moment, I'll show you the picture showing all of these together. So just a better quality. And I really hope you enjoyed this demo. So friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick demo. Here's again the final uh, result. I think there's pretty good light so you can see everything. Uh, my favorite is definitely <laughs> the tomato, by the way. Um, it's I love the Pyro Scarlet. And as I mentioned, like the, the as much as I love Schmincke, there's one thing to be said about Daniel Smith and that's their reds are fantastic. Um, so if you do a lot of florals and things like this, I will consider getting a, a few of the Daniel Smith as well. Like honestly, Schmenke is still my favorite brand, but um, uh, uh, Daniel Smith's reds are just beautiful. Um, so anyway, this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment below uh, if you have and also if you want me to do another one of these, let me know and let me know the color you want, okay? Because I can do a lot of things. I have a lot of oranges, a lot of blues, um, a lot of other colors. So just let me know and uh, we can definitely do another one of these videos. They're fun, they're cool, they're quick for me to make. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I, I have something around oranges or yellows. Um, so let me know if this is something you want to see and I'll definitely uh, try to provide for that. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube if you still aren't subscribed. Um, follow me on Instagram and Snapchat for more um, works in progress, things like this. You can actually see, you could actually see these uh, in progress um, if you're following me there. And
And this is it. I will see you again in another video really soon.